Oh. <laughs> I think so. There's no distractions. But there's no service here. I need to Welcome once more to In Focus, a production of the Government Information Service and the National Television Network. We are coming to you live from our studios. We are happy that you're able to join us once more this Thursday. And we'll have a slight change in our format today as we've got a number of guests who are going to be part of our program. So first of all, I'd like to introduce my co-host once more, Lisa Joseph. And Lisa, today we have very lovely, lo lovely Sheridan. So we know that um, we're going to go right into it, and we welcome all our viewers. And uh, again, an opportunity for you to welcome our guests, our first guest today. Absolutely. Second show for the second season. Yeah, we're in a great role. We want to say good morning and welcome to our studios to the beautiful, lovely oh. Sheridan. Thank you. And I always have to make sure it's not lovely, but if you have to include it's the lovely. lovely. Yes. <laughs> Sheridan. Um, you're not a stranger to St. Lucian's, but mm -hmm. of course, um, your work has had such an indelible impact mm -hmm. on St. Lucia's children. Mm -hmm. And I think by them having to go home and talk to their parents about it, mm -hmm. the message is definitely spreading. Absolutely. And not only are you in St. Lucia, but you're also taking these efforts across the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to start from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so lovely Sheridan mm -hmm. is an author, mm -hmm. but most importantly, what she wants to uh, sort of a champion is the Buddy Bench program. So mm -hmm. she's an anti-bullying uh, campaign. Mm -hmm. And for you, when did it all start for you to not just want to perhaps protect your own children or mm -hmm. children within your, your tight space as a teacher, mm -hmm. but extend this to children across the globe? Right, good question. Again, good morning and thank you for having me. Uh, it's such an honor to be here. I love coming here on Independence because the country is alive, it's so festive, and we get to share the message to tie in with the theme of togetherness and working together. For me, the mission for uh, the anti-bullying campaign started through, I, I have taught in different countries around the world and uh, just observing within the school system, um, in, an, in and outside of schools, what was going on. And I kept thinking, you know what, we need to have a shift. A lot of times you, we were responding to the bully with aggression. We were responding with um, anger and frustration. And especially when you're dealing with children, there's a root to that. You know, children, I don't believe they are bad children. I believe they are children who make bad choices. And a lot of times those bad choices stem from children being victims of bullying themselves or going through something traumatic or something in their lives that often we don't know anything about. And they sort of acting out and reaching out and seeking validation and attention and crying out for help. And so I was thinking, how can we, how can we change that? And so I t wrote a book with a simple story on treating others um, the way you'd like to be treated. It's called Be a Buddy, Not a Bully. And it's a self-published book. And I, on my own, I just started going into the schools and reading to the kids and talking to them about bullying. And I talked to the school district and they loved the message. And over the years, um, I found that when I spoke on kindness and spoke to them about responding with kindness and being kind to others and looking out for others, including others, um, teachers started to say they love that. They love the message. And they, as you said, the kids go back and they start to talk about it. And so when I heard about the buddy bench, I said, wow, this is a great way to incorporate it with the message I'm trying to spread. So I tied in the buddy bench with the message in my book. And I was on the board for the Mental Health Association. And what we do is provide mental health support for children and adults in the community. And that's in Florida. That's in Florida. And so we are always creating workshops and campaigns on how to reach children, how to help them. And then this became such a great passion. I was working in corporate America. But then I said, you know what? This is something I need to be doing you know, um, full time. And so I just created a founded Buddy Ambassadors and created a program. I went, I proposed it to the Mental Health uh, Association and they loved it and we started there. And you decided to come back home. And yes. And to help our 
Absolutely. So Close I started right. doing it in the U.S. And of course, this is my home. I love St. Lucia. Everybody who knows me knows this is, I'm tied in with everything St. Lucia. And so I just wanted to do it here. So I went, I went to my dear friend, Jonathan Gladin, who is another Lucian boy, you know, the artist, but he's yeah. Lucian at heart. And I said, John, I have an idea. I have this bench. And he loved the concept. And he just quickly came on board and he designed the first bench. And then, of course, you know, just when I'm passionate about something, I'm like, let's do this. Let's go. And he's busy. But he went ahead and, and did um, six more benches with the schools. And I just started. I, got, I went to friends and I told them about the idea. They loved the idea. They loved the concept. And we just started. Go I went to the ministry. I got an endorsement for the pr uh, program. And they loved it and they supported it. And that's how it started. And with that, the, as you said, the children, I think, um, started sharing the message. The teachers started hearing about it. They loved the kindness thing. Pe they started writing me and saying, listen, we need to, we need tools. We need, we love this. We need to provide children with the tools that they need to help them to be their best selves, to help them to, with their choices, to help them in decision with their behaviors. And so they wanted that support. And they kept saying, can you come to my school? Can you come? And so I just tied it in, you know? Make so. it happen. How does the body bench work? Okay. So the body bench is basically, it's not, I always go to the kids when I go present to them, I say it's not just any bench, it's a special bench. <laughs> and I see the body bench as a metaphor for so many other things, right? And so if, I, a lot of times children are out, they don't have a friend, they don't have anybody to talk to, and most kids are not going to say, oh, I miss, I don't have, you know, I don't have a friend, or they, they just sort of feel alone and they feel left out. So I was looking for something tangible to put the message of being a buddy into practice. I was looking for something, you know, I go to them, I talk about being a friend, but how do we put it into practice? And so when I saw the bench, I said, this is perfect. So if a child needs a friend, you need somebody to talk to, they're feeling left out, they sit on the bench, the buddy bench, and a friend or somebody reach out to them and come and say, hey, they know that person needs a friend. So it's sort of like a signal to say, hey, I need a buddy, I need a friend. And um, it started, when we started the, we started with it, we started to see that it was what children were actually using, especially the younger ones. You know, I love to reach them at that early age because this is the age where they sort of, no. Not beginning to process. Process, so yeah. They're, they're like. Influence. Exactly. What they're thinking patterns. Exactly. And they, they really, they use it. And the, the younger we reach them, the better. You cannot wait when they're older. A lot of times it becomes a conduct issues and, uh, issue, and that's when you need the psychologists and psychiatrists and all these other things. But if we reach them at a very early age, we can, we can see, we could shape, you know, and influence their behaviors in some way. And we could teach them the, the, sto the, what we're trying to teach in terms of empathy and compassion, um, instilling them. And so they start to practice that. So basically, if they, they need a friend, they sit on the bench and somebody comes out and reach out to them. And today you are launching the Buddy Ambassador campaign, and that's happening down at the Belvey Combined School. Mm -hmm. So out of the Buddy Bench, mm -hmm. we now have our Buddy Ambassadors. Yes, yeah, so what I did was I founded the Buddy Ambassadors um, organization, and we create programs together with Mental Health America. We create programs and initiative to help with um, spread kindness and inclusion. So we have activities. We award and recognize and honor um, boys and girls who exemplify what it means to be a buddy. They are leaders. They stand up for others. And again, it's based on character. It's not based on grades. A lot of times, children get rewarded for A's and, and B's or whatever grade that. And that's great. We want to, to encourage um, getting good grades. But we also want to remind children that it's an honor it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Mm -hmm. Character is important. I think that's a lot. That's something that is lacking. Into the, what's the point of achieving and being excelling, and then you're not a nice person, or you're not kind to others, you're not a good person. And so I said to them, you know, if we're talking about mental health in children, we really want to recognize the boys and girls who are um, exemplifying those um, behavior traits, characteristics, and don't don't focus on the grades. And so. We provide them with a certificate. They're a buddy ambassador. They get their buddy ambassador buttons. They get called up um, by the author when I do the presentation. And they're proud. And in that way, they encourage the other boys and girls who are looking on because I ke we keep coming back. At the end of every term, we come back. And we award more certificates. So the teachers and counselors at the school, we hold them accountable. We say, you know what? You have to earn it. If you like to be a buddy ambassador, you sort of have to show us through your actions and behaviors by where you treat others um, or through your kind acts. We'll be observing you throughout the term 
and we will reward you. So that's the body ambassadors component of it all. Okay, lovely, uh, quite interesting story that you've told us. Mm -hmm. I would like to know in the, your early influence, your, you know, we left, you left St. Lucia at a very young age. Mm -hmm. Was there anything during that period, the transition between St. Lucia and Florida that really influenced you to go in this direction? Or was it merely you got the inspiration up in Florida and with the limited experience you had in St. Lucia that really mushroomed into what's happening today? Very good question. Um, you know, when I look back at my life, I see how, that's so why I love my country so much, so much of my culture of being here has influenced the work that I am doing and, and what I'm doing and, and the vision and the mission I have in terms of the change I would like to see. Um, growing up here was great, of course, it's a great culture, but in school I was also bullied, you know, um, I was bullied a lot. And it, it, it influenced a lot of things about my behavior in terms of who I am, who I am in, in so many ways. And as I continue to, to grow, I see how that bullying impacted me. And when I started to observe and see what's going on in schools, it reminded me, sort of like um, took me back to that. And then I said, you know what? I want to be an advocate. I want to definitely um, be a voice. Now that I've really in full circle come to understand it, especially teaching in other countries and vi traveling. I travel quite extensively. So when I travel and I observe certain things, I, I thought to myself, I want to, in some way, have an influence in my country on how we can unlearn some of the things we've learned. And one of the things is that, for example, when I started with this concept of the buddy bench, people were like, in St. Lucia, what buddy bench, yeah, you know? Exactly. How is that going to, you know, that bullying is a part of us, you know? Like, we, you have to be tough, you know, that sort of, you know, but uh, treating others unkind, you know, um, the way we, communicate with each other, the way we treat each other, um, that should not be something that's part of our culture. The way we interact and, and the way inter even the way we deal with children. Some of those behaviors need to be changed and they need to, we need to unlearn some of that. And so I thought, you know, especially with compassion, um, we are a society that really lacks compassion, more so than ever. I've seen lately, it's really, we need to, in, uh, really work on being more empathetic and compassionate towards each other. But and I think it's the understanding what the concepts are because mm -hmm. I've heard many people say, but we are Christian society. Mm -hmm. um, so you rely on prayer. And so if I'm praying, I'm a good person. Mm -hmm. But we are lacking the <laughs> compassion right. that is supposed to be one of the core values of Christianity. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's uh, perhaps along the way we mm -hmm. have sort of lost what those values, values are, are maybe. and mm -hmm. it's all about being self self-indulgent and everyone is well i have to look out for myself self right and again you, you spoke about being tough mm -hmm. and it's the message that we tell our children if he punches you punch him back right <laughs> that sort of thing okay. but how do you even begin to uh deal with some of these because it's one thing to tell children you ought not to yell at someone don't hit, mm -hmm. um, don't fight. But how do you now deal with the issues that may be perpetuating mm -hmm. that sort of behavior in children? Mm -hmm. So I would think that's perhaps the sort of veil behind uh, the whole buddy um, but, yes. uh, ambassador's and program. That is the vision and that is the mission. And I was just having a discussion with the principal about this. I just went to her before I came here and she was telling me about um, a bullying incident that is happening at her school and uh, she said to me she's so happy that she has a counselor background because it really helps her in terms of how she approach and how she deals with it very um, not familiar not in the usual way that we deal with it over here and she said she realized that she have to uh, respond with compassion she have to find out especially with the kids who are being the bully what is going on why are they behaving in this way and sometimes being so ca compassionate and trying to find the root, you get um, criticized for it and you get condemned because we are generally a very aggressive culture. You know, if somebody, we hear an incident happen and we're like, yeah, you should do this and I'm going down into school and the parents and everybody gets really angry, but how does that solve the situation, okay? So when we talk about bullying, one thing I have to say, it's, it's not, it's, it's a community effort. You cannot just pinpoint one or two people and say, oh, this is the reason and that is the reason. There are so many layers to this. And I would say the mission that I am on, and I know it's going to take a very long time, but again, we have to hold ourselves accountable. 
And that starts with from leaders, um, you know, who's leading our nations, anybody in a position of leadership. We have the, the parents, the principals, the teachers, um, community members, everybody have to hold themselves accountable in terms of leading by example. What are these children seeing? You know, how can we talk to children about something? And that's why I have a workshop. I have a workshop with the Ministry of Education in providing, creating a buddy culture in the schools. So here am I talking to the kids and educating them about being a buddy, but I have to also educate the teachers on and provide support to them on how you can help create that culture in school, how you could respond to children who are bullying and those who have been bullied. What can we do? And again, it stems from them leading by example, creating a, a culture of kindness, a zero tolerance policy at school. I know you all had recently had an incident at the St. Joseph Convent. Yes. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I read a little bit about it. And, and I, I know there was a lot of um, commotion when they took a stand for suspension yes, to suspend the for um, the young ladies. And, you know, and, and my, when I, I said, you know, we need to go, you know, when we were little, when you did something, and you were disciplined. It was very unusual that somebody steps in and say, um, you know, it's almost like you understand you did something bad and the community came together and said, yes. You know, you don't even want your parents to know because then they'll be, they, they will say, thank you for telling me. And then they will, together as a community, you know you'll get in trouble, you'll not get away with it. So when, when, when systems are put in place where People you put in position to do their jobs, when they do their jobs, you have to, as a parent, them. you have to allow them. And you have to support them. A three-day suspension for ch ch uh, child, it's good for them to sit and reflect on their behavior, even if they were not aware or any of this. But it's good for them. It's good for them. It's good for but them. But because, again, lovely, it, mm. it, it sh it's a reflection of how the society as a whole oh, yeah. views bullying mm -hmm. and what it is that we determine I mean, right. is mm -hmm. bullying. Exactly, and that's another whole definition. Every, in this culture, it is different in terms of how we define bullying because, as I said, when I came with the concept, everybody's saying, oh, they, we're just teasing, that's just a joke, everything is a joke. I do, guys, I just joking with you, that's, you know, and if you are treating somebody, if somebody is being hurt, if they don't like it, if they are affected by it, it's not a joke. You know, they've been affected and we need to be mindful. And we see that it, it is a problem even at the highest level because we have people in leadership that have made jokes about people with disabilities or people who are in some, it's just almost like a custom to just say things not thinking of, that's not inappropriate. Online, you look at the thread and the conversation when people are talking to each other, they're insulting each other, um, you have character assassination, all of those things are just the norm. So that's again when we talk about unlearning those things that we have learned and, and really being educated on, on understanding that those things, have, there are consequences to such behaviors. So it's, it's really living conscious, living conscious and leading by example. We're going to take our first break in our program, but we're certainly going to continue on that trend and we'll find out a bit more on the Buddy Bench Project. We'll be back on In Focus. concealment of the origins of illegally obtained money, typically by means of transfers involving financial institutions or legitimate businesses. There are three steps in the process of money laundering. One, placement. This is the movement of illegitimately obtained cash from its source into circulation through financial institutions. Two, layering. This is the act of concealing the source of that money using a series of complex transactions and bookkeeping tricks. Three, integration. This is the movement of previously laundered money into the economy, mainly through the financial institutions, and thus such monies appear to be normal business earnings. What is terrorist financing? Terrorist financing provides funds for terrorist activity. It may involve funds raised from legitimate sources such as donations, 
profits from businesses and charitable organizations, as well as from criminal sources such as the drug trade, the smuggling of weapons, fraud, kidnapping and extortion. There is an interrelation between terrorist financing and proliferation financing, which is the act of providing funds or financial services used in the acquisition, manufacture or transport of weapons of mass destruction. How does money laundering and terrorist financing affect St. Lucia? St. Lucia can lose its reputation and international credibility. More violent and organized crimes and corruption. Penalties for the financial sector and loss of correspondent banking. St. Lucia will be evaluated in 2019 with respect to its money laundering and terrorist financing regimes. How can you help? Get involved. Learn about the threat that money laundering and terrorist financing pose to St. Lucia. And cooperate with financial and non-financial institutions when information is requested. Money laundering and terrorist financing are crimes with penalties of up to $1 million and imprisonment of up to 10 years or both. A message brought to you by the National Anti-Money Laundering Oversight Committee and the Attorney General's Chambers. Thanks for staying with us, reminding you that you're on In Focus. We are also live on WVent 93.5 and later in our program, you can call us on 468-2162. Reminding you that we have our in-studio guest at this time, lovely Sheridan, and she's speaking on the body bench. The very illustrious Palm Beach Illustrated Educator of the Year Well, Tell us a bit more about it. We're sure that a lot of it would have been about your authorship and your advocacy in the whole bullying aspect of in schools. Mm -hmm. Have you also, in Florida, gone outside of schools. We're not the only project here. And what's the prospect of you going outside of the school system? Because even if in the public service of St. Lucia, they've had this drive as well within the, the workplace to make it aware that some of it still happens. What's the prospect of that happening? And tell us a bit more about the prestigious award that you receive. OK, so the first part of the question is the Palm Beach Illustrated um, Educator of the Year Award. What an honor. Um, I was so thrilled to receive that because it was for innovation in education. And it's not basically in the classroom, but if you come up with a program that is different and is impactful, so it has to be measured. And as I said, I was doing this for a couple of years and they saw the shift in terms of what I was trying to, what I'm trying to create in terms of um, spreading the culture of kindness and inclusion, which is desperately needed, especially in the United States with all the divide right now and um, raising awareness on mental health in children. And so they love the teachers, the educators really spoke out and said how impactful it has been. And again, the impact of the program has to do with the principals and educators and teachers, everybody working together to help spread the message. I'm planting a seed, I am introducing it, but everybody have to work with me. And they saw that when they work together with me, they were seeing measurable um, impact. So, uh, that's what it was measured by. So it was a huge honor because I was definitely um, in the midst of some great um, educators. So that's good. So um, in terms of, there was a second part to the question. Over here, yeah. to extend it beyond the classroom. Yes. yes. This is a, it's, it's a big issue, especially in the workplace. And a lot of people have reached out to me um, outside and said, when are you going to introduce this into the workplace? And my... Um, organization I just founded it a year ago a little over a year so we are just starting I'm just starting to build and grow and see and that's definitely um, an area I would like to explore especially tied into mental health awareness um, in St. Lucia it's something that is needed but I I need we need the support of um, leaders of organizations of working together we li I like the theme on together but together we can achieve great things so um, we need the support of other organizations to come together to have a campaign on those issues, you know? And see how, how 
taking action on this makes for a better society. Society, absolutely. So it ties into the aspects of violence and crime. Crime, mental health, awareness, all, of those things. all the social yes. issues that we are facing, it all ties in together. And we have to make it a priority. This is not an option. If we don't, if we don't make it a priority, we will see that the society will continue to decay. You know, and then what are we going to do? Keep building big, big, big fences and, and just live building like prisoners? Prisons, wanting more yeah. police officers. Officers, that's not our, it's a domino effect. Yeah. And that's not our a country. That's not what we want for our beautiful St. Lucia. And so we have to put those systems in place. And um, I'm just happy for the support I've been receiving so far. It's been great with the community. I think, you know, as I was about to tell you, I was just telling you, we have 27 benches right now. I'm placing uh, six more uh, on this visit. And my goal is 41 by the end of the year to collaborate with the 30, 41 year anniversary. But it shows what we can achieve when we work together. Because not just me, we have commu organization, community members all coming together. In the private sector In the well. private and public sector coming together to spread this message of kindness. And if we work together and we spread this message, we can achieve so much. And I want to see that extend beyond the classroom outside of the classroom, in the workplace, every understanding, really educating the public on what bullying, as you say, redefining what is bullying and how are we contributing to this vicious cycle? Because there are so many people who are contributing to it and they're not aware. Now you keep mentioning mental health. Yeah. How does that factor into that? Because someone will believe, okay, well, bullying someone, taking advantage of a stronger, weaker person. Yeah. So where does mental health fit into this? When you look at research, and statistically it has been proven that a lot of the problems that um, face in society, it stems from some form of bullying. And it, it, it trickles down into so many other things. For example, trauma. People underestimate what is trauma and how it affects somebody. So somebody might be bullying you and calling you names or being mean to you or abusing you in some way. And if you think this is just the norm, you just go about life, this is the, they're not understanding how this is this form of trauma is impacting that person's mental health, that men their mental space. Later on, you see that person could suffer from depression, have all sorts of mental health in issues, some of them chronic. And a it could start from just these behaviors in terms of that form of abuse, but not knowing that it's abuse. Working in a toxic environment, living in a toxic environment, it does have a very big impact on our mental health. And so definitely the two is tied in. I remember speaking with some educators and they're talking about how angry mm -hmm. our children are. Oh. And so it, that within itself, mm -hmm. it's a, it sort of contributes to bullying. Mm -hmm. um, the children have all sorts of behavioral problems, problems. in the classroom, can't settle, they can't. Uh -huh. So teachers complain about more than half the time mm -hmm. in the classroom is spent in trying to settle the students, students and you're not really having that exchange of teaching and learning happening mm -hmm. so we can see how the program within itself is mm -hmm. it's more than just a concept more of let's that. just say spread love and people f to 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 sort of dismiss it mm -hmm. but it really speaks to the sort of future or maybe not even the future, the sort of now that we are having. The awareness is definitely needed. The awareness is needed. We need to go to the roots, stop dealing with it from the branches. We sort of like sweep these things and I think it's just going to go away. And I, we see now more than ever the cases with bullying. And a lot of things are not even being spoke about in the open. They have a lot of um, principals are frustrated and, and they, they need the tools, the teachers. There's a lot happening behind the scenes. and. If we don't address it, as you said, we're going to have to build bigger prisons. Um, the boys' training center will not be big enough. And that's, that's just not what we want for our society. So we have to raise awareness on this, on the issues of bullying. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, lovely. Um, any final words? You know that you've got to get on your assignment right. this morning. You're heading straight down to the Bellevue Combined School. Mm -hmm. Any um, closing remarks? And maybe even before that, I know that you will. You said that your organization is fledgling. I'd just like to know if you've had anything in place looking at monitoring and evaluating mm -hmm. to know how successful you are right. and maybe some of the feedback you're getting. Uh, that's, that's what I, I want to work on, and that's why I, I now really just start working with the Ministry of Education and seeing what we can do moving forward. Because I launched a campaign, I just started going to the schools, and I'm always here for a very short time. I'm based in the United States. So now I think 
because they realize that there is a need for this, we need to pay attention to this, I think we're going to be um, heading in that direction. So I'm very excited about that so we could measure and we could see how, how impactful it can be. Um, last thoughts is, you know, as a society, as we celebrate 41 years of independence with the theme, let's do this together, I just want to encourage St. Lucians and all of us to really be mindful of our words and actions and how we treat each other. And whether it's online, in person, uh, it's, it, these things do affect other people. And so and everybody's going through something. And so let's truly work together. Let's be kind. And let's say work. kind things yes, say about kind, someone even when other. they're not in a room. Exactly. Yes. Be mindful. Be mindful. And, and some of the behavior that a lot of us, we know that it is wrong. And just because everybody else do, does it doesn't mean that it's right, you know. And so we kind of learn some of the things that we've learned. And let's work towards truly creating a buddy culture. And we can only achieve that together. And that's what it means to working together. It's truly not with words, but with action. All in. and All in. Yeah. And your 20 seconds. I know that you and Ryan go way back. Oh, yeah, nice. Way back. <laughs> Ryan, yes. you are very proud to see that lovely. Yes, definitely, definitely. And blossomed into this yes, very yes, productive for sure. person. Yes, yeah. I didn't know that she had all that talent, but it was too young to know then. Yeah. But it's good to see that she's really done that and has come out to contribute to Ireland. And I'd like to say all the best to her dad and her mom. So Thank you. I'm Thank sure you so much. My mom well. told me to tell you hello. Yes. and. You said that my dad used to make your suits, tailor your suits. So um, I want to say shout out to my dad. And um, yeah, I, I remember listening to him on, this is an icon here. So yes. It's an icon, listening yes. to him on the radio, the sports, everybody knows you. So it's an honor and it's good to be sitting here with you today. Thank <laughs> you. Well, safe journey to the Bellevue Combine and yeah. all the other schools that you're going to be having your body benches set up. Yeah. And we're happy that you're able to come back to St. Lucia once more and continue on this program. Absolutely. Thank you. We're on In Focus. We'd like to say thanks to um, lovely Sheridan for being part of our first segment this morning. We'll be back on In Focus. Mm. Good job, guys. Nice. I think we come. Assistance program? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I remember. I remember. Yes, that would be great. That would be great. Do I come sure. into my office one? Sure. No problem. Hi, good afternoon, Chris. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Employee Assistance Program. thank you for recommending me for the EAP session that I did. It, um, the six sessions, it was really, really helpful. Sure. I'm really happy that you participated. Yes. Thank you. Go on and have a nice day. You also. Thank you. Right. Hey, morning, Crystal. Um, I just came morning. to apologize for my reaction the other day. Yes. Really? Yes. I, I, I did come to apologize and I do hope that you accept my apology. It's I'm okay. Sorry. Stuff happens. Thanks. You have a nice day. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Wow, you changed. If you believe that you are a victim of bullying or you are the bully, then seek help, seek counseling. Call the EAP at 4.